Hello, my name is Fabrizio Botero, executive chef from Waring, and I'm here to demonstrate the most powerful blender in the market. Three and three quarter horsepower, one gallon capacity, stainless steel jar, touchpad control, and most important, brand new, our variable speed. Let's see what they can do. The CD15 series are the most powerful blenders in the market, from nursing homes to hospitals to restaurants to any kind of institution that has a high volume processing. They're perfect. Now the variable speed one is brand new and I'm going to show you exactly what we can do from soups to sauces to marinades. Let's take a look at one. A hot vicious soie potato and leek soup. Alright, let's make the soup. I'm going to take the lid off, pour my hot steaming soup into the stainless steel one gallon jar. Because of the variable speed, I'm able to do almost all the way up to the top. I'm going to start off with the lid, very low, to show you. Then I'm going to remove the lid and show you the steamy action. And slowly, emulsify that soup. <sighs> Smell it. It's magnificent. Now to finish it off, just for safety, I'm going to lock it. Go on high speed. And make a beautiful puree. Done. Alright, let's see what we came up with. Oh, magnificent. Here we go. One full gallon of magnificent soup. Beautifully pureed. No better blender can do this kind of job that fast, that quick, and that amount. One full gallon. The herbs, and here we go. Now let's do the Caesar dressing. And now we're going to make a basic Caesar dressing. We're going to take the lid off, put all the ingredients in, pour the oil, and emulsify this beautiful dressing. Here we go. Eggs. Garlic, anchovies, mustard, turn it on, And slowly, slowly pour my oil in. Perfect, beautifully done Caesar. Creamy, thick. Beautifully emulsified. The CB15 series of iPower blenders, now with variable speed. The power is in your hands.
So after a, uh, a wonderful morning out in the wild, it's time to reward ourselves with a, uh, a good cooked meal. So uh, this wonderful watercress we got uh, from Jeremy today. Decided we're going to go with uh, a nice garnish. We'll use it in a nice um, spring-style salad on top of uh, some beef. We have some great uh, grass-fed uh, Washington all-natural beef, no antibiotics, no hormones. Um, we're going to pan sear it today uh, just for some nice caramelization, good mad flavor. Let the beef speak to it for itself. Mother Nature has done most of the work. A bit of oil in our pan. And once that gets up to heat, uh, we have a great company out here that makes handmade pasta, um, Carso's. Uh, we are going to use some of their basic gnocchi, their potato gnocchi, which is uh, yum delicious. Um, so we're going to serve that with the steak uh, and then some chanterelle mushroom sauce and then our uh, watercress to garnish. So get another pan going for this. We're up to heat here. There we go. A little bit of salt on the other side. Some butter for our gnocchi. So the beauty of this is probably 60% or more of what of what is actually ending up on the plate actually came locally. Uh, almost a third of the ingredients actually came through Jeremy, our forger. And the idea is to get a little bit of caramelization on the outside of that gnocchi. And then lots of black pepper. The black pepper is to help pair it with the tannins in the beef as well as tannins with red wine. This is meant to go with a, a, a nice, real easy drinking, approachable red wine. Um, and the black pepper uh, helps soften both the tannins and wine. It adds an instant 10 years to any glass of wine you're drinking, a good healthy dose of black pepper. So. Nice color there. This color that we're getting on the outside, that's the natural sugars in the beef. Again, the, uh, the, the grass-fed beef, um, there's not a, it's not as fatty a uh, beef, so there's more concentration of the proteins that are in the meat as well as the sugars that are in the meat. Searing the beef itself actually caramelizes those sugars. Uh, a, gives it a nice, um, you know, the same reason we put beef on the grill is we like those charred, those strong, um, not burnt, but well-cooked flavors on the outside of the beef to, to pair with the nice creamy tender uh, beef flavor inside, and this is that cooked sugar just makes it that much sweeter. The same reason you would cook sugar to make caramel sauce, you want to caramelize the, sugar, the natural sugars in the beef to give it more enhanced, more complex flavor. Same reason we're doing the gnocchi on the outside, potatoes and the, the grain in there, it's all interesting on its own, but you add a little bit of caramelization, suddenly you bring out those nutty, complex flavors, and then we add the, the black pepper, and suddenly you've taken three different elements. Um, combine them into one ingredient on the dish and it makes it a completely different dish. So now we've got some nice caramelization in the pan. We're going to let that finish roasting in a nice hot oven. Now we've got all this great caramelization in the bottom here that we don't want to lose. So using some of our local wine, we're going to deglaze. Get all that nice flavor back. Once that gets down nice and low, we're going to add some of our nice chanterelles. Um, springtime's great for a very young chanterelles starting to come out, teasing us for the summer season. We're going to add a little bit of chanterelles there. Chanterelles have a nice delicate flavor, so we don't want to overcook them. We're going to add a spoonful of some veal stock. Make our own veal stock. We are just going to reduce that down. That pepper crust we pulled out of the creek today. We're going to trim it back. And all these bottom trimmings we would use for a nice crest sauce. Since the, since the water crest has some pretty intense flavor, I mean, it's nice and young and succulent, we're going to add something a little bit sweet to help balance it out. So we're going to shave a little bit of shallots, add a little bit of color as well. And since we want Mother Nature to speak for us, not speak for her, little bit of oil and just a little bit of lemon juice to dress. Again, not trying to reinvent the wheel, just some gnocchi down on the plate. Let's see how our steak's doing. Those beautifully nicely browned chanterelles makes up our sauce, our little watercress salad. This is Greg Lopez, executive chef uh, at Urbane Restaurant, the Hyde at Olive 8, serving some grass-fed Washington beef with 
locally foraged watercress at Urbane Restaurant. Quatre appareils constituent la gamme junior. Le junior standard monobloc, pied fixe. Le junior plus, avec son pied démontable. Le junior fouet, monobloc, fouet fixe. Et le junior combi, deux en un, mixeur plus fouet. La longueur du tube en version mixeur est de 225 mm. Un tube et une cloche en acier inox, un couteau T-Metal avec une durée de vie très supérieure à un couteau standard. Ces appareils sont équipés d'un variateur de vitesse, d'une double isolation et d'un bouton de sécurité. Le démontage du pied ou du fouet se réalise d'une manière très simple sur les Junior Plus et Junior Combi. Ils sont bien sûr conformes aux normes d'hygiène et de sécurité en vigueur. La longueur du fouet est de 185 mm. Ce type d'appareil est idéal pour des préparations telles que les potages, les veloutés et les sauces, avec la possibilité de faire varier la vitesse. Réservés aux professionnels, les appareils de la gamme junior sont à l'heure actuelle la référence sur le marché. Du modèle standard au modèle combi, il couvre sans aucune difficulté tous les besoins pour des préparations allant de 5 à 25 litres. L'entretien est très facile et rapide avec un simple passage sous l'eau. Les appareils dynamiques de la gamme Junior sont légers et maniables. Ces appareils sont élaborés avec des matériaux de qualité et robustes. Les mixeurs de la gamme Junior seront vous accompagnés dans la vie de tous les jours et pour de nombreuses années. Hello, Fabrizio Botero, executive chef for Waring. You want to see the new champ in the back of the house? It's right here. That fight of prep stuff that you thought it was good? Wait till you see what this can do. Three and a half horsepower, variable speed, and the Raptor jar. And now let me show you what we can do. Egg whites, never done before. Ganache, chocolate, grounded to a powder, never done before. Hummus in seconds. Egg whites first. All right, let me show you. It is the variable speed and the jar configuration, very wide at the bottom. They can do egg whites. It takes about three and a half to four minutes, but it's flawless. We're going to start with this and then go right into... It's going to start. And while this is doing, I'll show you chocolate into powder. Eight ounces. Four seconds. Done. Now, turn down the variable speed, and I'm going to add the heavy cream and make a gorgeous ganache. Perfect. Let's check on the egg whites. Just about one more minute and let's do some hummus while we're waiting. 
chickpeas, garlic, a little oil. A little tahini, a little lime juice, and to spice it up a bit, some chili paste. And now the olive oil in. Lid, turn it on. Let it start. Turn off my egg whites and then go back into it. Kick it up. Smooth hummus. Look at that. And, and now let's take a look at the egg whites. Perfectly stiff. Not even if you try. Stiff, stiff. You want to do meringue? You want to do uh, an angel food cake? They won't even go down. That is perfect. You've never done this in any blender before. Our extreme blenders are the best. Viral speed, back of the house, there is nothing it can't do. Try it out. Hello and welcome to another instructional short from Wearing Commercial. Today we're going to be focusing on the MX1500 XT. This is the most powerful blender in its class at 3.5 peak horsepower. It's also the fastest blender in its class at 30,000 max RPMs. Today we're going to show you a lot of the features. You have adjustable speeds on this unit, you have four reprogrammable beverage stations, you have a maximum pulse, you have a reprogrammable normal pulse, you have a drink counter, and it comes with this large polycarbonate sound enclosure which reduces the noise by about 30 percent. Right now we're using the 64 ounce jar, you also have stainless steel options and 48 ounce jar available to you. Right now I'm going to show you some of the features on the control panel, show you how easy this thing is to program. So if you take a look down here, we're going to program a smoothie recipe in here. First you push speed up and speed down button. You're going to push number one to get into the new programming session. And now I'm going to set a speed for a basic smoothie recipe. We're going to start with 40%. We're going to use the max pulse button to enter to the next segment. And we're going to set the time at 7 seconds. Max pulse again. We're going to select our second speed, which will be 70%. As you can see, you hold the speed button down and the speed scrolls through very quickly. So this is a simple process, no computers needed, no nothing. You're doing it right on the control panel. Now we're going to set the last segment at 100%. We're going to put that on for 10 seconds and we're going to run a 25 second smoothie. And it's going to be fantastic. Most delicious you'd ever taste if you were here with me. Push speed up and speed down to save it. And now you got program number one saved with your with your specified program. I'm going to show you a delicious smoothie recipe. Just put some frozen strawberries in, a lot of them, about half a jar. Put a little yogurt in there for some flavor and some protein, delicious. We'll throw some bananas in there, probably one whole banana. And then we're going to add our orange, strawberry, and banana mix. Very nice. It's about 32 ounces. 30 ounces. We'll save a little for later. Cap it off and we're going to throw it on. I'll show you the sound this unit makes and the sound it reduces with the sound enclosure. You got your number one program. You can hardly hear anything. We're at segment number two right now. You heard the speed just kick up. And when the sound enclosure is close, you can hear everything I say. It's really fantastic. Now we hit the 100%, we got about four more seconds, and you got the smoothest smoothie around. Ah, fantastic. Obviously very simple to program, it makes delicious smoothies in no time at all. This is the MX1500 XT from Wear and Commercial. Thank you very much.
Blending is one of the most basic tasks in the professional kitchen, but there's more to blending food than many of us realize. Most chefs would agree that bigger is better when it comes to motors, and our blender, a Waring Extreme, has as big a motor as you can get before the lights in the kitchen start to dim. The design of the pitcher and the blades is critical. The blades don't simply cut the food down to size, instead they act in concert with the shape of the pitcher to compress, shear, and even cavitate the blending food. And flow is also important. 
A well-engineered pitcher, like the one on our wearing blender, keeps the food flowing past the blades without the need to plunge a spatula into the mix. As you can clearly see here, liquid at the top of the pitcher is being pulled down by the blades before being cut and flung out to the sides of the pitcher. This is efficient blending. A final factor is the durability of the blades. A solid professional blender forges its blades from exotic steel alloys that are extremely hard, keeping the edges sharp even after grinding the toughest foods down to size. Really hard, durable foods strain the motor and work to dull the blades. An extreme example is grinding wood chips into small fragments for our kitchen smoker. A lesser blender would overheat before getting the job done and the blades would quickly dull. But not everything in the kitchen needs such brute force. Sometimes it's better to use a bit of finesse and turn down the speed of the blade to do the best job, like for our olive puree. A clever and fast way to remove pits from olives for making tapenades or purees is by blending them on the lowest setting. Blend the olives with no liquid for about 30 seconds or until the pits are completely clean. Working on the lowest setting allows you to chop through the meat of the olive but not crack the pit into shards. Once you have blended the olives for about 20 to 30 seconds, you can empty them out into a container and separate out the undamaged pits. At this point, you are ready to make your tapenade or you can return the olive meat to the blender and continue to blend into a puree. With the aid of Waring's high-powered motor, you can blend durable foods like raw carrots into a soup with nothing more than a little water and thyme. To do this, add clean and trim product to the blender and add just enough water to blend. Once the food begins to cook from heat created by friction, it is only a matter of minutes until it becomes a velvety smooth puree. But blenders can only puree something so fine so blending for long periods of time will not yield an increasingly fine puree. However, the longer you blend the puree, the more the flavor will develop and change as it becomes hotter and further reduced. This is by far the easiest way we know how to make a smooth vegetable puree. In order to blend something like peanuts, which seem very dry but contain a large amount of oil, it is important not to blend too quickly. You will also need to consider the volume you are blending. Too little and the peanuts are flung to the sides and never make contact with the blade. Too much and the peanuts will stop flowing and the blades will free spin, at which point you will then need to scrape down the sides over and over and this can become a huge waste of time. To blend the peanuts into a butter with minimal effort, start with about 600 grams of nuts on the lowest setting until they become fine pieces and begin to flow. At this point you can begin to slowly turn up the speed. As a blender becomes warmer, the fat in the nuts begins to thin, and as this happens, the puree will begin to flow smoother and smoother. You can decide when the nut butter is finished based on how coarse or how fine you want your nut butter. These are just a few of the many amazing things you can do with the Waring Extreme Blender. With its powerful motor, excellent blade design, and lasting durability, the Waring Extreme is a great addition to any commercial kitchen. Hi, my name is Fabrizio Botero, executive chef for Wearing. If power is what you want in blenders, it's right here in the MX series. Three and a half horsepower. Powerful enough to do just about anything in a bar, in the kitchen, in a smoothie shop, just about anything you want. And the Extreme series has every possible configuration that you would need in a blender. A toggle switch, membrane control, timer, it comes with different jars from stainless steel to 48 ounce and the newest jar of all, the Raptor, right here. Wait till you see what it can do. Three and a half horsepower will make this blender blast anything from ice crushing to margaritas to smoothies to coffee drink. Let me show you exactly how everything works. Okay, you thought ice crushing was easy? Not in any blender, but ours with the Raptor jar. Okay, we're going to put some ice in here. And we're going to blend it on high for three to four seconds. Wow, it's done. Unbelievable. Okay. Take a look at that. Have you ever seen anything so powerful? The Raptor jar. Okay, you saw the ice, and that's why we call it the Raptor. 
It is so aggressive. It will do drinks, everything, literally in seconds. We have a 10 seconds timer here. I'm gonna do a strawberry daiquiri with a strawberry mix, some rum, bucket full of ice. You think it can do it? Watch this. Even one more last ice cube. Fantastic drink. Fantastic drink. Look at this. It's like a gelato. Right? So thick and gorgeous and beautiful. Voila. Mmm. Perfect. Perfect. And that was some extreme power. And talk about the power. What about the warranty? Three years on the motor. Two years parts and labor. That is what wearing does for you. Great blender series, the extreme.